So thanks for inviting us uh, today and thanks for investing the time. So Caballetta was developed uh, um, and launched out of the University of Pennsylvania uh, in order to develop and launch the first curative targeted cellular therapies for patients with autoimmune diseases. And make no mistake about it, um, while the biology suggests we may achieve cure, in fact, um, all we need to do to be uh, successful for patients and for our investors is be better than the best available therapy that is a, uh, um, available on the market for a patient or in development. And so in order to um, summarize the story right up front for you, let me take you through this slide and then we'll go in, in depth into a couple of things. So Caboletta uh, is, is developing these highly specific CAR-T products to treat B cell mediated autoimmune diseases where a cure is possible, where the B cell is necessary and sufficient to cause the disease. And we're doing that by designing and manufacturing products using tried and, and tested proven technology uh, that in the, uh, in the initial program is derived directly from the University of Pennsylvania and its deep experience in this field in the discovery and development of Kim Raya. Um, the Descart program, which is studying the Desmoglein 3 CAR-T product, uh, is expected to provide acute safety data in the first half of 2021. Uh, we've got multiple clinical sites across the U.S. that are ramping up to initiate enrollment. The first of those at the University of Pennsylvania is now open and screening patients. And we recently were designated fast track designation and orphan drug by FDA. We have a really robust uh, preclinical pipeline. The lead program in the pipeline behind our uh, lead clinical product, uh, the lead program is the Musk CAR, which is directed towards myasthenia gravis patients who suffer from Musk myasthenia gravis. Um, the IND enabling studies are ongoing and we expect to file an IND for that program in the second half of next year. Uh, we anticipate manufacturing independently from the University of Pennsylvania for that program and the validation uh, to do so to support that IND uh, should begin by the end of this year. In addition, we have three new recently announced programs that we've uh, licensed in uh, for three additional targets uh, that we are not disclosing publicly at this point, but we're um, quite excited about. We've also recently announced a gene editing partnership with Artisan Bio, uh, which should enable us um, uh, the, the opportunity to use a toolbox of gene editing tools that can either enhance or expand our portfolio of next generation cars. The first to issue of our U.S. patent portfolio, there are six filed U.S. patents, 13 XUS. Um, but the first issue in the U.S. was very comprehensive, unlike the CART-19 space where anybody can put a different targeting domain on and go after the same target. Uh, in our case, uh, the antigen that is the subject of attack is what's required uh, for a target. And that entire antigen or any part of it uh, is what is covered in our first to issue U.S. patent. So we're very excited about the portfolio. And then finally, uh, our cash runway takes us to the third quarter of 2022 with $120, $123 million in cash and spending about $10 million per quarter. So what is the platform? Um, the platform uh, is essentially based on the CART-19 platform that was discovered and developed uh, first at the University of Pennsylvania in support of what ultimately became Kim Raya. Uh, in order to make uh, Kim Raya, uh, the uh, physicians uh, started with the patient's own T cell. They genetically modified it with a signaling domain and a co-stimulatory domain shown here. And then they added a targeting domain. The idea was to have the CAR-T, this killer, um, attack or attach to and kill all of the B cells that are expressing a CD19 antigen. In order to identify those B cells, they put a targeting domain on, which is an antibody fragment that has the ability to identify these CD19 antigens. Um, the CAR T cell, if it is effectively administered in a cancer patient, will kill all of the cancer cells in leukemia, lymphoma, and the like, uh, but it'll also kill the healthy B cells that express that antigen. As a result, the patients are left, if successfully treated, with a durable and a deep elimination of all B cells. There's no antibody mediated immunity. Well, when that uh, product was discovered and developed in the lab of Carl June, under, um, it, within the lab under the leadership of uh, um, our, our scientific co-founder, Mike Malone, um, he was, Mike was approached by our other scientific founder, Amy Payne, a B cell mediated autoimmune disease expert scientist who's also a dermatologist treating pemphigus vulgaris among other diseases. 
the two of them got together and they said in October of 2011, when this New England Journal paper came out demonstrating that CART-19 could indeed provide a deep durable response for cancer patients, the question they asked was, if you could selectively destroy only certain B cells, maybe a slight change in the targeting domain, but nothing else could lead to the selective elimination of disease causing B cells that are causing these autoimmune diseases. And so they set about um, uh, working together and their collaboration produced a science paper in 2016 that really prompted the formation of Cavaletta. And, and so the design uh, conceptually of our entire platform is this. You start with the same patient's own T cell, not a cancer patient, but an autoimmune diseased patient. You modify genetically to include the same signaling domain, the same co-stimulatory domain, but you change the targeting domain. Instead of using antibody fragments that can identify all B cells, you use the antigen that's being attacked by the body. And if you put the antigen that's being attacked, in the case of pemphigus vulgaris, that would be the skin glue, the glue that holds your skin cells together is being attacked. It's called desmoglein-3. That desmoglein-3, when placed onto our CAR T cell, will be identified by the B cell receptor on the pathogenic autoreactive B cell. That B cell wants to make antibodies that are gonna attack your skin. Instead of binding to your skin glue, it will bind to the CAR T cell that we administer and it will be destroyed by the CAR T cell. In contrast to CAR 19, the healthy B cells do not express that B cell receptor. They do not show the pathogenic autoreactive B cell um, uh, antibody present on its surface. And as a result, those cells should be left alone. The publication of that science paper demonstrated that in an animal model, uh, this was indeed possible. That has led to the formation and launch of Cavaletta. And you see here the publicly disclosed pipeline, including Pemphigus vulgaris, which we'll go into some depth on in the discussion. Um, myasthenia gravis product, which is headed towards IND filing in the second part of next year, and a hemophilia A product directed at those who have inhibitors to factor eight. So what is pemphigus vulgaris and why is it a great disease for us to treat? Uh, well, it turns out it is the prototypical B cell mediated autoimmune disease. Um, the um, disease is um, entirely correlated, nearly perfectly correlated, with the presence of desmoglein-3 antibodies. They are 98 to 100% sensitive and specific for the disease. If you have the antibodies, you have the disease. If you do not have the antibodies, you don't. So the fact that there's such a tight correlation and that it's believed that these are the cause of the disease means that if we can biologically selectively eliminate the B cells that make these antibodies, we should be able to durably um, and deeply treat and hopefully cure the disease. There are two forms of pemphigus vulgaris. Uh, about a quarter of patients have the mucosal form, uh, which provides the patient with uh, you know, painful blisters uh, in their mucous membranes, which includes the eyelids, the mouth, the rectum, genitalia. Um, and then on top of that, if you also have the mucocutaneous form, you'll have superficial blistering across your body. Both of these types of patients are treated with broad immunosuppressive regimens. You start with steroids, um, layering on other um, immune suppressing therapies that are often used in, in the treatment of cancer um, and uh, have the associated toxicities. More recently, rituximab has been approved and rituximab is sort of like a revolving door for these patients. Uh, reliably um, puts them in a transient remission and equally reliably they will see a recurrence of disease. The actual data from the uh, study that uh, provided rituximab with its label expansion are shown here. About 70% of the time, a patient who takes rituximab over a two-year period as instructed uh, can expect to have at least a two-month period as defined in their trial where they are disease-free and off of medicines. There's no guarantee, and in fact, oftentimes they will have a recurrence of their symptoms and the need for more medicines, um, steroids and the like. Uh, but for at least a two-month period, they will be disease-free. Unfortunately, 30% of the time, if you do respond, you'll relapse within a year, and 50, another uh, third of the patients will relapse in that second year. Uh, and about a third of patients never have the complete response that they would have liked. So there is a need for something much better. The Descartes trial is our uh, phase one clinical trial in the mucosal dominant pemphigus patients studying the desmoglein 3 CAR-T product, open label study, classic three by three design. And what we're um, evaluating is uh, a dose escalation phase, 
followed by a consolidation of the dosing regimen. The regimen starts with four infusions and then goes down to one infusion uh, in part B. And then in part C, a dose expansion, which is um, also an open label at the appropriate dose with the appropriate regimen. FDA guided us during an IND process that was 30 days long and where everything we had submitted was approved as submitted. Uh, but the FDA did um, guide us that we should consult with them after Part A in order to be sure that uh, we consider putting a comparison group in Part C such that the trial could represent um, meaningful efficacy data to either uh, be a part of our label or to be the label for Desmoglein 3 CAR T. And so we will uh, consult with FDA regarding Part C at the appropriate time. Uh, the study endpoints here will be reported out by dosing cohort. Um, and uh, the primary endpoint is the adverse events, to dose limiting toxicities. Of course, we're focused mostly on the acute tolerability profile, the acute safety profile. But we're also collecting an awful lot of uh, correlative studies and markers. The most important on the efficacy side is the desmoglein 3 antibody titer. Um, it does not spontaneously remit, and its half-life is about three weeks. So if we get rid of the source, the B cells that are making the plasma cells that are making these uh, antibodies, uh, we should be uh, able to see a dramatic decline in these antibody titers in a patient within maybe four months. Um, and so we're saying within six months, middle of next year, we should see target engagement evidence if the low-dose co cohort delivers that sort of um, outcome. And so that's, that's our plan. Moving into our lead preclinical program, musk myasthenia gravis, a really terrible disease with um, very few treatments available um, for the other more popular forms of more prevalent forms of myasthenia gravis. Uh, you can use the acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, you can use Soliris, you can use other therapies where it works, but in musk form of myasthenia gravis, about six or 7% of the patients who have this disease, which is about 65,000 in the US total, um, about six or seven percent of them don't have those options. And so it's high dose steroids and toxic therapies. Um, and they're, they're um, looking for something uh, that can relieve the revolving door of, of this disease. Uh, reason we went after musk myasthenia gravis apart from the clinical unmet need, which is really important, is the biology. Turns out that the musk protein, which is the protein being attacked by your body, looks an awful lot like the desmoglein 3 protein that we already have a product for. Uh, and that is being studied in clinical trials. And so we designed the musk car uh, very efficiently. We know that this, like the pemphigus program, this is a disease where rituximab can give you a transient relief. Therefore, elimination of B cells is an effective clinical strategy. That's important information as we think about where to invest our resources. And so uh, we're, we're um, committed to, and we did commit to presenting the in vivo data that demonstrates specific in vivo target engagement for this program. We presented that data at the AAN meeting uh, in the first half of 2020. Uh, and, and what the data shows on this slide is um, in a, uh, a mouse model that the musk car eliminated, eliminated the anti-musk target cells um, and that the positive control in addition to our musk car, the positive control being the CART-19 product, which basically eliminates all B cells. So it has these white mice across the board throughout time, but the two negative controls demonstrating the specificity of effect here. Um, one is the non-transduced T cells, which you would expect to be negative, and the other is the desmoglein-3 targeted um, uh, um, group where you would not expect the musk response and you don't see it. So two negative controls and a positive control confirm th that the musk car is doing its job and doing it quite selectively in, in this in vivo study. Our manufacturing strategy uh, is like the rest of the company, uh, built in a very strategic manner. Um, so we have three stages. The first stage is um, uh, really directed towards making sure we have an efficient allocation of capital in the formative years. So over the first few years, um, you know, leveraging the proven capabilities of the University of Pennsylvania and its manufacturing experts, the processes that they developed for Kim Raya. Uh, in fact, we cross-referenced the IND still held by Penn that formed the basis of the product that ultimately became Kim Raya. And so that really, in a very um, valuable and meaningful way, de-risks the manufacturing of our lead program. 
but it also dramatically reduces the cost required for the company to build its own manufacturing capabilities. Stage two is to build out um, manufacturing partnerships with CDMOs, and we're in pilot studies right now with Brammer and Oxford on the virus um, uh, production side and with Lanza and Wuxi on the cell manufacturing side. And then the third stage, which will be triggered by appropriate clinical evidence of success, um, will be to build out our own wholly owned facility, something that I'm very confident we can do as a company. Our um, head of science and technology, Gwen Binder, uh, previously uh, did exactly that for Adaptimmune, where she was the first employee in the US and she led the um, build out of the entire manufacturing and quality team, as well as uh, the build out of their facilities for manufacturing their products. Uh, so with all of that said, the capital efficient approach, uh, the leveraging of an experienced um, uh, process and people in facilities that are proven at the University of Pennsylvania to have delivered dozens of first in man studies with novel products puts us in a really strong position as we go forward. Um, so looking at the Desmoglion 3 lead clinical program, uh, this slide uh, you know, reviews the IND clearance followed by fast track and orphan drug designation and then the opening of our first site now uh, um, uh, behind us, additional sites coming very soon uh, and the trial now underway. Excited to see what that data reveals in the first half of 21. Um, our lead preclinical program for musk uh, myasthenia gravis. Uh, we've demonstrated the in vivo target engagement. We've met with FDA and gotten their guidance. No surprises for us, very similar to what we did for the Desmoglion 3 CAR-T program. Those studies are now underway and we're in the midst of um, choosing who our manufacturing partners will be. We'll initiate validation of those processes uh, at the end of this year and be in a good position, we hope, to file our IND in the second half of next year. Really appreciate you taking the time to listen to our story and um, thank you very much.